What's the word, yo? Whoa. <laughs> Mikael Bridges. He's a Nick, man. He's a Nick. It happened. Um, it happened like two hours ago, if I'm being honest with you. But I was too busy. This tray came out of nowhere. I couldn't drop what I was doing. But hey, we here. And I guess I got to start saying this now with these quick reaction videos. I hold the right to switch my opinion if, if things start shifting over the next couple days slash a week or so, okay? So when we do these initial reaction trades, my word is not bond. My opinion is always fluid. But now Mikael Bridges adds, what, the fourth Nova boy to the bunch? So they're one Nova boy away from the Infinity Gauntlet. And I don't know what happens if Leon Rose snaps his fingers and he's got that fifth, th that fifth guy. Ryan Archer Diakono, I hope you're in your age and are sitting next to that phone because you might get that call. Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, and now Mikael Bridges. It's weird. This is different. We just very rarely in history have we seen one team be represented so much on a singular NBA roster. You know what I'm saying? Like Dukes and Kentuckys, they always got a couple people on the team because they just produce so many NBA players. But like Villanova obviously just have success. But like this many of them or one team is kind of crazy. Let's talk about the trade though because magnificent, hey, I will say this right up top, magnificent work from, from Sean Marks. Whoa. I mean, he's, he's done some good things throughout his career. Do not get me wrong. The last couple of years have not been, let's say, amazing for them over there. But this right here, this trade right here, come on, man. Let's talk about it. It is the Knicks sending four unprotected picks. Four of them. 25, 27, 29, 31. That's one more pick from the Milwaukee Bucks that's protected for this year. I'm sorry, for next year. And an unprotected swap in 2028. And a second rounder for this year. One of my favorite things about this trade is this pick. Is this one. Does Leon Rose tell Sean Marks, yeah, I'm not doing this deal unless you give me a second for next year. What is this second round pick doing for the Knicks? Watch they draft the next Jokic with it or something. But what a, what a haul, what a haul. We're going to talk about it from both perspectives. Let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets because I love this for the Brooklyn Nets. Like 10 out of 10, especially when you start talking about the things that they did like a couple minutes after that. Basically, it got so convoluted. It was a, it was difficult for me um, to, to even even like comprehend it but this is the thing that they did after um and you don't need to know all the specifics because i just it was just a little bit too much most importantly in this deal per sources houston relinquishes the right to swap a houston slash okc first round pick for brooklyn's 2025 first round pick the next control their own pick to go full into a rebuild in the 2025 draft i don't do draft coverage like that but the 2025 draft is supposed to be one of them ones and one of the things that Joe Sy said in a press conference like two, three weeks ago is that they were at a crossroads with their franchise. They didn't know whether or not they wanted to keep Mikael Bridges, move some other pieces, and have max contract spots in 2025 to build around Mikael, or should we trade Mikael Bridges and go into a rebuild? This makes it so much easier to go into a rebuild because you have your own pick. The other time they did all this, the other time they went all in when we talk about them getting Kevin Garnett and getting Paul Pierce and getting Jason Terry and getting back whatever, whatever, they had to bite the bullet and still go rebuild even though they didn't have their own picks. And again, those picks turned into Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But now they they really kind of eliminated that, that, that period of time that we don't talk about anymore. They kind of eliminated, to an extent, they kind of eliminated the failed experiment of the big three because they will have their pick in the draft that matters the most. Now, they didn't get all of their picks back, but they will have their first round pick in the Cooper Flag draft, and that's huge. So I want to give them a round of applause because I remember, not people literally laughing, but, but the conversation around the Brooklyn Nets when they acquired Mikel Bridges and then, then the Memphis Grizzlies. The Memphis Grizzlies offered four first-round picks for Mikael Bridges. And the world was like, what the hell? Why are you not taking four first-round picks for Mikael Bridges? There's no way you're going to get anything better than that. Well, they did. They stood pat. And they did. Now, you can say, Kenny, the 2025, 2027, 2029, and 2031 picks might not equate to anything because the Knicks will be good for the foreseeable future. For sure. And I think you can say that about pretty much every single trade over the last couple of years that have had a star player. And I guess Mikael Bridges is fitting in that because of the, the trade package. A star player get traded for a bunch of picks. Like, yes, the team that you're acquiring the picks from, is they're buying in for the now and the future. Like, it's not like the Knicks are this geriatric team. Like, everybody in their team is relatively young. I don't know if anybody in their rotation that matters is 30 yet. Like, like Jalen Brunson's not 30. Julius Randle's not 30. OG Anobi, who they, I'm assuming is going to be back, is, is not. Nobody's 30. So it's not like this team is going to be 
um, like the, the the Brooklyn Nets of old, where it's like we acquired four guys in their 30s, and in three years, they're going to be either out of the league or not good anymore. I, I understand that, and that's why the Knicks feel comfortable with doing this. But still, just having that type of equity in drafts, even if those picks are not going to equate to the Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown like the other time, it's just great. And I, I think if you do the math, for Kevin Durant, they get nine first-rounders. Nine of them. I think they got four for Kevin Durant specifically from the Suns, plus Mikael Bridges, plus Cam Cam Johnson, right? Plus Cam Johnson. And then they just got five first rounders for Mikael. So they, they're they walking out right now with nine. And they're talking about full rebuild. There's a chance that you can probably get another pick for Cam Johnson. Again, he, he doesn't stay healthy. I think he's played 57% of all the games he's been eligible to play in his NBA career so far. His contract is pretty big for his production. But I'm sure there are some teams out there that will be calling. And you might be able to get another first round pick. So you might walk out of that failed big three experiment with potentially 10 first round picks out of it. And again, I think that's phenomenal. Um, that That is the getting picks for your stars, objectively, at this point in basketball in 2024, just it just is the right way to go about a rebuild. Because even if you're not using those picks, who knows? In 2027, the Nets have Cooper Flag and somebody else, and now they want to use the picks that they got from Kevin Durant trade or the Mikael Bridges trade to buy in and do something else. So again, masterclass from Sean Marks and company. I don't even know if I mentioned this at the beginning because I've been I've been rambling a little bit. I've been a guy that has made a fair fair amount of jokes to the Brooklyn Nets, man. You know what I'm saying? We got to the NBA Finals, and I had a tweet. Thank you to the Nets. Because Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are part of a Nets deal. Kyrie Irving was a part of a Nets deal. Both of those teams that fought in the Finals, the Nets had a good part in building those teams. So I've got my jokes off, but there's no jokes here. This is phenomenal. Especially when you look at what Ian Bagley, uh, Begley, I, I don't know if I'm ever pronouncing this man's name wrong, uh, right or wrong. Um, he tweeted this. Um, Nets surely didn't want to trade Mikael Bridges to Brooklyn, but Bridges' side was prepared to force the issue by telling teams he wanted to be with New York. So, like, considering Mikael said it's Brooklyn, I mean, it's it's New York or nothing, they walked out great. Now, of course, Leon Rose and them didn't know that. Leon Rose didn't know that Mikael Bridges was like, it's here or no other place. But they, they used... All the leverage that they had to walk out with a plethora, a plethora of picks. Now, let's talk about the New York Knicks because obviously they got the player. Um, and, and most trades that end up like this, the team that got the player ends up winning the trade. That's the way it has worked in NBA history. Not every single time, but a lot of different times. So let's talk about it. Um, the Knicks go pretty much as all in as they have in the Leon Rose era. Leon Rose has been a guy to make a meticulous move here. They are small deal here that turns perfect. A Jalen Brunson signing for a second round pick who just showed his ass a little bit in the playoffs, but some people thought he was overpaid and he turns to a superstar. They've done some smaller deals here and there. They never have gone like completely, completely in until now. And the question was, when, when a team like this that is as good as the Knicks were last season, remind you, they were the two seed and hell, they were, in my opinion... I think when they made the OG Ananobi trade and how good they looked after OG Ananobi, I thought they were um, going to be a case study and as how far can you go as an NBA team without a top five-ish player, right? Jalen Brunson in the playoffs, you can argue in the top 10, right? But without a top five-ish player, but unfortunately they, they battled so many injuries that we never really got to actualize that experiment or anything. But the, the but this team was very, very good. And I commend a, a team or front office that can recognize that, yes, we were good, and, and our season ended partially because we were injured, but we're not just going to sit back and just run it back every single year. Like, teams around us are getting better. That team that just won the championship, they're not going nowhere anytime soon. So we want to maximize our timeline as well by acquiring other players that are great. And Mikel Bridges as a fit there? I don't know if there's many other people that fit any better. I mean, Tom Thibodeau has been a guy that's going to play his dudes, and Mikel Bridges don't miss games. It would be, what a travesty would it be if uh, Mikael Bridges missed his first game of his life since high school because he's Tom Thibodeau and Tom Thibodeau got him playing 46 minutes. But like, this is an added depth piece as well. And a lot of the questions I got after my tweet, because my initial tweet was, whoa, because it came out of nowhere, was like, okay, what does this mean for OG Ananobi? What does this mean for Isaiah Hardenstein? And I think that the Knicks are still going to be in on, on retaining OG Ananobi and the lineup of Brunson, Bridges, Ananobi, Randall, and then I think Isaiah Hartenstein might be a casualty to this trade, um, but maybe it's Mitchell Robinson who was in some other trades. Regardless, whoever's at that five position, one of those two dudes, that is 
a, a great lineup, especially if Dante DiVincenzo, who just was so great this season, and Josh Hart, who was just so great this season, are your six or seven man. We still got we still got Deuce. We still got Precious. We still like that is a squad. And when you can build a squad, you don't care about the picks that you gave up in the now. And 2031 can it come back to bite you? Hell yeah. But that's not what we're caring about today. Because we have a star player in his prime and some of the best collection of talent when it comes to role players. Let's add another one of them dudes. And they did. Mikel Bridges as a talent, you would think you look at that draft cabinet and be like, that's an overpay. And I understand that. But sometimes you're not just acquiring the talent. You're acquiring the fit. You're acquiring everything around it. More, It's sometimes just more than the talent. Because again, was it Kevin Durant was four and two players? And you got five, like you traded five to get Mikel? Like, yeah, it could, it, it could be looked at as an overpay. But will it be an overpay if this team is good enough to go to the conference finals? To get to the NBA Finals. To raise Larry O'Brien. Nobody cares at that point. And in, and in my adult life, this last Knicks team was the best Knicks team I've ever seen other than, what, 2012, 2013 Knicks? This was the best Knicks team you've ever seen. And at 2012, 2013, Knicks flamed out to the Pacers too, right? To the Pacers too. And then that, that window shut. I don't even know if the window was completely open, if I'll be honest with you, because 2012, 2013, I'm 16 years old. So I'm not completely as locked in as I am now. But the window right now, when you consider that there are teams in the conference itself that you feel like you can compete with, the window is now. Like, we don't know what the Milwaukee Bucks are going to look like next season because they're rumored to be looking to make some significant changes. The 76ers have three players in their roster right now. We don't know what their team is going to look like. So the really only team you competed with into like right now is the Boston Celtics. So the window is open. It's completely open. So I just, I, this is one of them trades I'm walking out like, man, some people cooked. I think both of these teams feel really good about what they did. Again, the Nets just, I think the Nets get the higher grade for me considering they had little to no leverage because Mikhail was basically going to tell the world that he wanted to be a Nick or nothing else and they walked out with five first round picks. Um, I, I wonder what this means next for Nicholas Claxton, who's a free agent. Does that mean that Nicholas Claxton's just, just gone for um, in, in free agency? I know some teams like the Grizzlies are probably pretty excited about that, or some other teams with cap space are probably really excited about that. Um, what does that mean for Cam Cam Johnson, right? I, I just put a Photoshop of him in a Dallas Mavericks jersey, and I saw some Mavs fans like, yes, Kenny, you got it. Other Mavs fans like, no, why would we do that? We already got P.J. Washington. Uh, um, Cam actually hits his three-point shots, like a 40% of them. No disrespect to P.J. He was phenomenal in that run. But like Cam is a different level shooter, but again, 57% of his total games. I understand why you won't want to pay him 20 something million dollars if he only played 50% of the games. Regardless, 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 uh, Dorn Finney Smith, they have players that if we're going, if they're going for a rebuild, they can they can really go for a rebuild. And the question that we were asking, who's gonna be the next team to tear it, tear it down? A lot of us expect it to be the goddamn Bulls. Instead, it's the Brooklyn Nets. And that's great. Because I remember a, a Twitter question, and, and I'll, get, I'll get out of y'all here. Um, a Twitter question was, of these two teams, which, which of these two teams have the bleaker future? Is it the Bulls or is it the Brooklyn Nets? And it was like a 50-50 split, like near 50-50 split. 50, 50 split. Now the, the answer is unquestionably the Bulls right now because we don't know what they're going to do. The Brooklyn Nets made their de decision, and they have their own first-round pick in a 2025 draft, which looks great. Looks, <laughs> looks great. So they could tear it down. Cam Thomas might average 40 next season. Ben Simmons rehabilitation? I don't know. I'm just excited. The offseason is here. The draft is tomorrow. So this is not the only trade we're going to get. I'm excited. I'm excited, man. Hoops is here.